It's a measure of the job David Moyes has done at Everton. The managing high expectations is now part of his job. This was a big season for all concerned. But with the summer arrivals of Tim Howard, initially on loan from Manchester United, Wolves inspirational centre-back Jolien Lescott, and England striker Andrew Johnson, a wave of optimism spread throughout the club. And the campaign wouldn't disappoint. New signings Tim Howard and Andrew Johnson made their debuts against newly promoted Watford at Goodison, who were shown exactly how tough life would be back in the big time. It has been a very open game and entertaining first 15 minutes. Now Johnson brings it down neatly. That's what he's all about. That's why they pay eight and a half million pounds for him. That is why they think he will be able to join the likes of Dixie Dean, Graham Sharp. Bob Latchford in Goodison Park folklore. Everton won, Watford nil, and it's taken Johnson only quarter of an hour to mark his debut with a goal. It's Arteta. It's a good strike. Very close to goal number two. Beat the wall and the goalkeeper, but not the crossbar. Hit the bar moments ago with a free kick. What can he muster from this kind of position? Only three forward for Everton. Only needed the header from Cahill. Very close. And they've hit the woodwork twice in the space of as many minutes. Clever yeah. flick on from Johnson. McFadden. Cahill, will he get there first? Is that handball? Yes! Penalty conceded by Chris Powell, who's claiming the ball hit his head. That is a poor decision and a very costly one for Chris Powell and Watford. It was a fortunate penalty, but put away with a plot. And Everton surely now will get the new season off to a winning start. Well, it's a big goal for Mikel Arteta, takes so much of the tension out of this game for Everton. Prishkin. More time and spacing than he might have expected there. Francis, and the deflection puts it in. Watford have their first Premiership goal. It will be claimed initially by Damien Francis. It will ultimately end up as an own goal. A great start for both Everton and for AJ. Yeah, I was delighted. Uh, obviously, uh, the most important thing is to get three points for the team. But obviously, I've been carrying a bit of uh, a thing on my shoulders about getting like the first goal, and uh, I got it today, and I'm uh, delighted. It was a great start for us because Watford had come up, you know, on the back of their win at Wembley, and you know, full of confidence. And it was difficult. And I think you look at Watford's performances, uh, especially at the start of the season, they were a hard team to beat, and we found that on the day. But Andy getting his goal. I think gave everybody a lot of confidence. Not, more importantly, I thought it gave all the players confidence because suddenly they had seen that we had a goal scorer who could, who could win his games. The first away trip of the season was to Blackburn Rovers at Ewood Park. Traditionally a tough place to go and Everton were made to work hard for a point. Here is Bentley. Early chance for Roberts. Can he get it behind Everton here? Real chance. Good save from Tim Howard. McCarthy takes over for Blackburn. Bentley. Yovo steps in. McCarthy scores! 
We have to say it's been coming. Benny McCarthy's first goal for Blackburn Rovers gives them the lead. See McCarthy plays in, lovely run by Bentley, gets in the box, gets a block. You don't think he can get enough on it, but does he? It's a terrific finish, kept his composure. That's a nice touch, and Johnson has beaten the offside. Real chance, great save by Friedel. There when needed. And no one on the end of Osman's delivery. Well, I'm just saying, he's not a save to make. He did there, stood big. Johnson will be disappointed. Johnson trying to get in there, was he fouled? Well, that did look a fairly blatant shout, and Uriah Rennie is unmoved. Well, he's got a smile on his face. I think that was a pen. I think Johnson's pace has got in there again. Andy Todd can see what's going on. It's a blatant push, blatant block. That's a penalty. They're the sort of decisions that cost teams. As the season goes on, you know, if it stays at 1-0 now, they'd have been delighted with the point, haven't they? Well, here comes McFadden. Is there an opportunity here? There is. Oh, must be surely Cahill, yes. Everton have got the equaliser. Well, look at the pace. Gets beyond. Friedel comes, gets the touch over. There's a pullback. I'm sure that would have been a penalty. Comes back to Cahill. Johnson does well to get out of the way. That's a good finish. Good pace. Leaves Todd again. Contact there, that was a pen for me. Had it not gone in here. Look at that for a finish, cool as you like. Next up, the capital. Not the happiest of hunting grounds for Everton down the years. It was 20, in fact, since a win at Tottenham Hotspur. But few performances over the season could have pleased the manager more than this one at White Hart Lane. Now Kevin Kielbat is going to be sent off. Only his third challenge of the game, but it's his second booking. And the Irishman leaves the field only half an hour into the encounter. And Everton will have to play for the last hour with ten men. He's tracked him back. He's just got done for pace a little bit. Mark Olsey maybe had no option to be sent him off. Now they've got this set piece to defend. And it's pulled short. Dawson deflected and somehow as it looped up, Howard was able to make the save. And Dawson will feel that if he'd hit it with any conviction at all, Spurs would have scored. Leskett and Yobo both wait on the edge of the penalty area. Leskett makes the near post run, it was very close, but it's steered in. It's an own goal from Callum Davenport. And the ten men of Everton lead by a goal to nil at White Hart Lane. Just comes off the unlucky Davenport, but it's the quality that's put in here. Away from the keeper, invites the attack. And it was a little faint touch there, and Davenport just can't get out of the way. Wrong place, wrong time. But it's all about the quality of the set piece. Side lead by Golden Nil. Lennon. And still Aaron Lennon. Actually trying to take on one too many, and Osman it was that came back, and now Everton might be able to break. Thanks to a clever return ball from Arteta. David snapping at Osman's heel, pull of the shirt there as well. He's done brilliantly to maintain possession. Wonderful play. Phil Neville getting forward, Johnson sweeps it in. 2-0 to the 10 men of Everton. A goal made by Leon Osman's industry in the midfield. And that's why they paid the money for Johnson. Spurs in all kinds of trouble now. Look at Phil Neville, how far he is up. That's top quality striking, gets across his marker, and there's two of them, can't stop him. But it's the quality of the ball in from Philip Neville. I think it's as good a performance since I've come to this club. Uh, you know, from going down to ten men, uh, it seemed to galvanise us, really. And uh, we really took the game to Tottenham. We, we, we were forced into keeping the ball, we didn't have two players up front. And, uh, you know, we, we, we took the game to Tottenham. They had a lot of possession, but it, but we, we tended to counter-attack and uh, we looked dangerous. And uh, the goals just came at the right time. Uh, it gave us a little bit of breathing space and it, it enabled us to keep the ball a bit more. And, uh, you know, we've not won here for 20 years. And, you know, before the game that was mentioned. But we, we came here in a positive frame of mind. And uh, I think 
but at the end of the day we, we fully deserve the victory. A disappointing way to end his Everton career, as this would be the last game Kevin Kilban played for Everton. But his manager had nothing but praise for the man he'd first nurtured at Preston North End. He was a great lad to have around. He was a top quality player. But his sending off sort of rejuvenated the team that day. And we went on to uh, uh, probably our best performance of the season. One of the best since I've been here with 10 men at Tottenham, which as we all know in the past has been a really difficult place to get a result. Everton were off to a great start. And beaten at the end of August, taking seven points out of a possible nine. Confidence couldn't have been higher going into September. And now for the game the whole of Liverpool waits for, the derby. And this one was completely dominated by the People's Club. They first met in 1894, and now for the 240, 204th time on this occasion in the Barclays English Premier League, with Robbie Fowler looking for a very positive opening, it is the Merseyside derby. It's a wake-up call for Tim Howard. Johnson. Twice in his three games for Everton so far. A nice build-up and a chance and a goal. Everton strike first in the derby. Flicked across, and there's Cahill coming in on his own. They've been on the back foot literally since the kickoff, but find themselves 1 0 up. Garcia palmed away, and then against the outside of the post after the goalkeeper had saved. Gerard stretching. Howard gets a great hand on this. Falls to Gerrard, and he did remarkably well to even get a shot on target. It's a bit of wrestling involving Alonso and Cahill. And here's Johnson with a chance for two! More awful defending from Liverpool. Rafa Benitez will be pulling his hair out. Watch this, Carragher. He's got one eye on Johnson, I think, but not concentrating on just putting the ball out of play. Everton can't believe this score. 2-0 up. They've hardly had a kick of the ball. Point tackle by Sissoko. Neville. It was, of course, genetically programmed to defy all things in red, representing Liverpool, having played for Manchester United for so long. Osman. Oh, that was a chance. What a great chance. That should have been three. Risa. Sissoko. Another go from Rita. Once more, Sissoko. Herpia. Here's Gerard. And Herpia again. They're a pity for handball against Hibbert. And when you consider that Liverpool had a couple of pretty decent penalty appeals early on, and see how different the scoreline might have been. Now, was it handball? Lee Carsley. And the goalkeeper. Couldn't keep it out, Johnson's got another! Everton have scored three in the derby for the first time since 1966. It's a calamity for Pepe Reina. What a mess this goalkeeper Reina makes of this. The initial shot, should have put it over the crossbar. Neville does well there, great little ball inside. As Carsley bends it into the top corner, Reiner then tries to catch it, realises where he is. And Johnson has the easiest goal he'll ever score, I'm sure. Guess who's not going for a night out in that? That sums it all up for Liverpool today. It's been a disaster. That's it. 
It is very definitely Everton's day. Andrew, your first ever Merseyside derby. What a memorable one for you and for all Evertonians. Yeah, it's amazing. The fans are brilliant. The boys have been looking forward to it all week and uh, it's a great occasion for the boys, a great occasion for the fans. Uh, and it was a great three points. Tim, to beat Liverpool is one thing, but to beat them 3-0 is extraordinary. We've been working hard uh, this whole season. That, and, uh, I mean, you know, this is just for the pride of the city and the fans deserve it and so do we. Uh, you know, they've got no given right to come on the pitch and just win the game and we, we fought hard and that, that's what it's all about. We showed our spirit and we showed character and that's uh, what we've done today and I'm really happy for AJ especially because uh, he, know he knows what it means now to be a Blue. Yeah, it's a special day. You got things rolling with the first goal and then AJ steps in with a couple. Yeah, like, you know, it's great always to get on the score sheet. The lads did well to put me in but, I mean, uh, AJ's an unbelievable striker. He's obviously going to get his goals and... Uh, he keeps, he keeps doing it week in, week out for us and we're going to get results. Andrew, they've been talking about this game all week on Merseyside. Did it live up to billing? Yeah, it's a massive, massive, massive occasion. Do you know what I mean? Like The fans are brilliant. Uh, like The gaff and that's been brilliant. Like The boys have been brilliant. They worked hard. Uh, they got luck amongst them and uh, we didn't give them like, time to play and uh, we got a result. That, that was beyond the wildest dreams. That truly, truly was. When AJ got the famous... That... Uh, Indeed, God, if you want to take me, take me now. That was just a magnificent day in every way. To beat them three now at Goodison was, was, a, was a real big factor. And I think probably the confidence boost it gave everybody that, wait a minute, we could go on to have a good season. And once again, AJ getting a couple of goals on the day certainly boosted him and boosted the whole team and, and I think the supporters as well. In Andy Johnson, Evertonians had a new hero and more goals followed for AJ throughout September as Everton remained unbeaten and progressed in the Carling Cup. It's a cute pass to Johnson, it hits him on the blind side of the defender. Naismith's in support. That's a poor pass. Sharma. Particularly good pass from Boyce, he's having a poor game. He's bustled off the ball by Cahill. Lots of options, right across the six yards. Ball to Johnson! Never doubt it when he's in that area. Goal a game, Andy Johnson does it again. Well, well set up by Tim Cahill. And when it comes across goal, always difficult for defenders running towards their own goal. And who else was it going to fall to? And it's come from but Andy Johnson. One touch enough. And Everton at last make the breakthrough, and it's no more than they deserve. Phil Neville. The zoo has to be careful with that handball. Referee says no, Cahill continues. Side foot hit the uh, midriff, let's call it, of Hill. And the side foot from Osman didn't have the power, but it drifted just inside the post. Another top-class save from Kirkland. Space that he's got, and he's given it to Johnson. Red alert when he's got it. Maybe you should say blue alert. 25 30 yards out, he creates havoc. Yobo, the only way is back. And he disproves that theory and tries to get himself out of trouble. But uh, keeps the pressure on Everton. Kevin Kilban for Wigan Athletic puts in a good cross. Sean is in there! Oh, what a wonderful header! It's a wonderful header from the midfielder. And it's game on again. It appears that Arteta is going for it. He does. The wall well built. Neil Hesty winded. Now Osman, that was inside the area. Penalty. Osman's got his back to goal, lands at his goal side. Osman has nowhere to go there. Chris Kirkland has a decent record at saving penalties. He fills the goal. It's beating! It's 2 on Everton. That's a good penalty under real pressure. Kirkland goes the right way, but it's just an awkward height for him, just a little bit too high. Three quarters of a pretty feisty game gone. It's nicely for 
We're going to come to Shana again. He's got his double. Everton just can't leave him alone. Well, it's Tim Cahill who was caught by Johansson. Just pulling it back, hoping there's someone making a run from midfield. And it's another terrific finish from Sharner, who's made that run all day in the hope the ball was going to come in. And once again, Wigan have stood the game on its head. And it should be. Held it up well. When they made it, it's fouled by Holden. Quickly taken. Neville's delivery. BT up there. Oh, the goal! James Beatty gives Everton the lead at London Road. Mark Tyler just couldn't claw it out. And it was a quality cross from Phil Neville that made it, you have to say. Oh, and off the line! Oh, that's a goal being given! It has! And it's Benjamin who scored it! Davis. Beatty flicks it on and it should be looking to get there. Was he held? Still got it. And it should be. Tyler holds on, it's in. Cahill could have won it for Everton. Boxing clever. And may have sent Everton through. And the whistle blows, job done for Everton. Some scares along the way, but Tim Cahill mopping it up after Anichabee's burst into the box has won the tie for Everton. As Emre swings it in, everyone's hesitated. No offside flag. And Amiobi has scored, Everton are furious, expecting to see a flag, but it never came. And Shola Amiobi had the simplest job to give Newcastle the lead. It seemed to be that maybe Lascott was the man that was playing him on. You'll see the ball gets delivered. Well, I think Amiobi's offside as he's delivered there, centre of the picture, around the penalty spot. Comes back onto side, I'm not sure if they're saying he's been active or not. Lascott goes back. Certainly takes his time, Amiobi, to put it into the net. Game took his time. Look as he takes the ball. Quick check with the linesman. Yes, I'm on side. Now he concentrates. Fires it past Tim Howard. And well, the linesman's looking right down the line of things. He can see the blue shirts run out. He can see the black and white shirts that are still there. And well, David Moyes is furious. Sibierski, that's a great ball on to Parker. Clever! Howard did brilliantly to stop that. He's aware of where the goalkeeper is. It's a daft touch. And I think Howard just maybe gets fingertips to it. Yep, just to guide it away from the target. Well, Teta with the Everton corner. Pre-arranged signal. Didn't quite work. And the shot by Carsley. Rebounds away to Neville. Arteta. Tempting ball in, and this time no mistake. And yet again, it's Tim Cahill who's on the end of it to give Edmonton a precious goal. I say this fellow's just got an unbelievable knack of being in the right place at the right time. He's only about five foot ten, he's not the biggest, but he knows how to get there. His timing's impeccable. Parker. Bad challenge there by Hibbert. It's just really badly timed by Hibbert. That's been by the, the pace of Parker. Plays a 1-2 and you can see Hibbert commits himself, goes to ground and catches the ankle of Parker. No, no. No, no. Car sticking tight to Cahill. Neville. Oh! That was a foolish challenge by Bramble. Oh, so the kind of and it's another card, he's off. 
Not only have they conceded a free kick just outside their penalty area, they've now lost a player. You see the ball comes in and it's, it's a real swipe to the leg, he doesn't get the ball. Another free kick and Hibbert has been in trouble as well. Mr Bennett, consistent as ever, reaches immediately for that well-worn top pocket and Hibbert is dismissed. Hibbert doesn't get the ball. I think Sibierski makes sure that the referee sees it. And it's been given away clumsily here. Everton have been gifted a great chance as Osman takes it on. Can he finish? Good save by Harper. Great time to score a goal just before the managers recite their half-time lectures. Ball comes in, Johnson! Leave him alone for a second, and he causes mayhem! Great ball in, fantastic delivery, but what about the finish? He's not had a sniff, he's chased lost causes, he's worked hard. No wonder they go and congratulate together. Team effort, team goal. Now, Mikel Arteta! Great save, Weaver! Johnson, oh, that was blocked on the line and it did look suspiciously like Dunn may have used his arms. Great move and how many times, what a save this was as well. And what it is for defending as well, hits him in the chest. You can see the referees in a great position, no problem. Corner take is Arteta. Good little dink in, free header. Oh, top draw, top class save, Nicky Weaver. Fantastic save. They do well to get the header on target, but look at the way he moves his feet. Uses all of his frame to get there, it's an outstanding save. Barton's going to have to go solo, he does. Barton does exceptionally well, puts in a great cross, and it falls to Beasley. Oh, he passed the buck to Samaras, who wasn't expecting it. And he gets another stab at it, Samaras takes a double deflection. The post comes to Everton's rescue, now Sinclair! The Evertonians can open their eyes again. And Stuart Pearce and his side can just not believe their luck. You never know. Could be Stuart Pearce's lucky horse that brings his team the luck. It's down there by the water bottles again. There is one final thrust forward from the visiting team. Comes down to Richards! Oh my goodness gracious me! Almost five minutes into the stoppage time. Micah Richards gets the equalising goal. The silence at Goodison is deafening. Richards, right place, right time. The young man, he anticipates well. What a finish that is. On the bounce, they just keep the ball alive, they just keep the momentum going. But what about this for a finish? The Premiership table still made pleasing viewing after an unbeaten start of the season. And the pre-season optimism was looking well and truly justified. We started the season really well and it was something which we had discussed as we, we had mentioned and uh, the players, players got off to that good start we wanted. You know, Tim Cahill, Andy Johnson had been getting the goals at that period and uh, in the main most things were very positive. In the North East, Tim Cahill continued his good form, but it wasn't enough to prevent a first defeat of the season at the hands of Middlesbrough. Resilience can be one of the keys to a successful season, and against Sheffield United at Goodison, Everton proved they had it in abundance. Now Simon Davis. Won his battle with Ledgetwood. Arteta. Neville got his cross in early. Yes, Mikel Arteta. 1 0 Everton. Starts to move here. 
Phil Neville, great support play, fantastic cross into the box. And a terrific header from Arteta. Gives Paddy Kenny no chance. That's a header that James Beattie would have been proud of. Beattie. Simon Davis. Now Cahill. Arteta. Through to Johnson. Andy Johnson. Pulled back by Claude Davis. And it's red. Johnson gets in front of Davis. Well, I think Davis is very unlucky here. Well, Neil Warnock is fuming. Claude Davis has exited. It's James Beatty. It's 2 0 Everton. His second goal of the season from the spot. He did it against Wigan and he's done it here against Sheffield United. And a terrific penalty kick. I mean, the keeper's got absolutely no chance. Cover. Got a slot in Bromby. McFadden missed his challenge. And Weber's strike is blocked by Howard. to hold up a Nietzsche B, and of course one man's suspension, a suspension is another man's opportunity. McFadden! Great save! He's only six yards out, McFadden. And when the ball's flighted in, terrific bit of goalkeeper. I always felt we'd win the game comfortably. Um, they came out the second half and they had the goal, which, which we expected, uh, made it a bit more difficult than what we thought it was going to be. Um, but. Great result for us at the end. Along with new boy Andrew Johnson, Tim Howard and Jolien Lescott had made promising starts to their Everton careers, helping shore up the back line. And this was proving to be as beneficial as Andy Johnson's goals. Their introduction during the pre-season, chance to come away with the players, play some games, you know, bond with the players, see, see how it worked at the club. I think that helped. And, uh, you know, it's something which we've realised, you know, if that can be done, then I think it's... Certainly helpful to get those players in a bit early. I think Johnny Mascot is not a smashing signing. I think he's an amazing signing. An England centre half to me. Um, I think he's been majestic. I think he, he's probably my player of the season. Shrewd transfers indeed, but Luton Town's visit in the Carling Cup showed that young homegrown talent will still feature strongly at Goodison Park. going down on the Barnett's challenge. Lescott arriving and Cahill scores! Well, you have to say it's been coming. Tim Cahill gets his sixth of the season. Fadden. Keane didn't make that and really had to. It's Johnson. The chance has opened up. Oh, and it's over again. Well, it's an unfortunate mistake by Foley. Barnett's had it. Wasn't his most certain. Now Arteta stabs it through. Cahill, McFadden. That will settle it for sure. And James McFadden's first of the season could not have been simpler. Edwards keeps going. And at the other end, a slip by Keane has led an inch of year. Two against three. Still an each He just kept going and going.
next came the daunting prospect of a first ever trip to Arsenal's new Emirates Stadium. Highbury used to appear regularly in all Everton's worst nightmares, but the new surroundings, coupled with a David Moyes game plan, brought about a refreshing change. In by a tete. And Everton have scored. Tim Cahill has got the goal. i got to say, it's a, a terrific ball in. I think Arsenal had 11 players inside the penalty area as that ball comes in from the corner, but it's a wonderful delivery. Cahill piling in in hope and knew very little about it, but reacted very quickly to get it into the roof of the net. Fabregas. Henri. Terrific hit from Thierry Henri. Howard alert and able to fist the ball clear. Fell there by Carsley. I thought that was soft. Might be wrong, but I thought Lee Carsley took plenty of the ball there. Had no choice but to make the challenge, though. Van Persie. Oh, fantastical! Arsenal are level. And it's Robin Van Persie. Well, Everton have got four men in the wall, they've got Osman charging, but when the ball struck as well as that, I don't think the goalkeeper's ever going to save it. Well, game on now. I knew it was going to be difficult to come away from here with the result today. Uh, in order to do that, we were going to have to defend um, as a back four and as a team, and I thought we did that really well today. It was a good result, and we went there at a difficult time for Arsenal because they were still getting used to the, uh, to the stadium. But from our point of view, again, it was another... another game which showed us that you know we could go and play against the top teams and, and get results. Everton finished October in sixth position and the low is too early to start checking passport details. The signs for the rest of the season look very promising indeed. In November the club announced that Planet Hollywood entrepreneur Robert Earl had bought the shares owned by the Gregg family making him the second largest shareholder behind chairman Bill Kenwright. Everton's awful record at Fulham continued, largely thanks to some suspect refereeing decisions, and that would become a reoccurring theme in AJ's season. Neville, Johnson. Oh, and he goes down, up against Ian Pearce. And Martin Atkinson points for a goal kick. There's the tie away, there's the contact, I think that's a penalty. David Moyes certainly thought so. Everton have done pretty well all the attacking in this first half, and Johnson... No doubt he's been the biggest threat of all. He's trying to stretch a leg out and can't quite get over the ball once he arrives there. Chris Coleman will have to see that as a bit of an escape, I suspect. Jensen deflected! 1-0! And it's Klaus Jensen! But he's the one player on the pitch for Fulham, certainly, who's got that little bit of quality. But he needs a deflection. I think Tim Howard has this all the way if it doesn't take a deflection. It's not a fantastic strike, but that just loops it up over the top of him. And that little bit of luck that Fulham need, they've got. Came off Carsley, but it'll go down as Klaus Jensen's goal. Teffer again, cleverly through for Johnson, great play by Johnson, he's around the oh. goalkeeper, but what a recovery from Niemi. He came out, kept his legs shut, stayed big for as long as he could, and the second save's fantastic, the way he gets up very quickly and dives down to his left-hand side at the feet of Andy Johnson. Arsenal's young gunners brought about another premature exit to a Carling Cup campaign. And Aston Villa snatched a victory at Goodison Park. And adding insult to injury, an accidental clash between Lee Carsley and Tim Cahill left the Australian sideline for several weeks. In the season's final analysis, 
November's defeat of Bolton could be viewed as one of the most important. Not only did it end a run of three consecutive defeats, it kept Wanderers within catching distance. Charles delivery, oh, and it almost caught Howard completely out. Reacted well in the end. Well, they talk about the ball moving from three cases of the ball moving, that's a case of the wind moving the ball. Stubbs looked to get in there. Less got two. Second bite of the cherry for Arteta. It's interesting. Oh, and Jaskalainen called into urgent action. Well, I'll tell you what, Arteta does ever so well. I mean, it's not for the faint-hearted in that penalty box. Arteta. He continues his run. Oh, goal! Fantastic from Mikel Arteta. They hit them in the counter-attack, picks it up on the right, comes inside. An absolutely fantastic strike. It's Tal. Oh, and lucky! Davis! Well, have you scored many like that before? I don't know, no, maybe similar. More with my right foot, obviously, than, than with my left. But that was really nice to score and, and get the three points for the team, so really pleased. It was a very tight game, and uh, we've had some strange games against Bolton at different times. They are a hard side to play against. And it took that one to go from Mikel, where he came inside and, and shot from the edge of the box. So it was a big three points for us. Next up, Charlton at the Valley. A performance deserving of all three points. But Everton just couldn't manage to put the game beyond the Londoners. McFadden, referee plays an advantage, McFadden's through! El Karkuri managed to divert it wide. McFadden does brilliantly well. Okakui and a little bit of time to get across and make the block. David Moyes is still seeking his first win at the Valley as a manager. Two draws and two defeats. And five. As much for his reaction as for the foul, in trouble with Alan Wiley. Dived in on a couple of occasions, just giving a free kick away. Arteta. Oh, it's an own goal. Herman Horaidison. And when you're bottom of the table, it's that sort of thing that tends to happen to you. It's not even a good ball in, it's a poor delivery. Just that little deflection from Osman, takes it onto the legs of Eriderson. And he can't do nothing about it. Everton have been masters of the 1-0 win over the past two seasons. Nine of them in the Premier League two seasons ago, 12 of them last year. You know, Valente played himself into trouble. And there's the equaliser, driven in by Andy Reid. But that's what Charlton needed, and it was a gift from Nuno Valente. He's got time on the ball, takes way too long. It just falls nicely for Andy Reid, and he just puts his foot through it. Head down, strikes through it. It's his first goal for Charlton. David Moyes has been concerned at the number of what he calls poor goals that Everton have conceded lately. The theatre of dreams was a hurdle too much for most teams. Manchester United were already top of the Premiership table when Everton called into Old Trafford at the end of November. November wasn't kind to David Moyes and his squad. Everton only managed to pick up one point from five games and slipped down the table to ninth. However, struggling West Ham were comprehensively beaten at Goodison in an impressive display at the beginning of December. Tyson brushed aside, obviously lacking the sharpness due to his uh, inactivity recently because of that injury problem. Tevez, oh, he's done that well. Oh, it's a great knockback. 
and it should have been the first goal of the game for West Ham United and Lee Bowyer. Watch how Tevez just drops his feet, changes direction, then picks out Bowyer, and he rather hits the shot into the ground and gives Howard a chance. What a mistake there by Ferdinand, could cost Dealey, Johnson, what a great save. It's a brilliant save, he misjudges this, Ferdinand, instead of heading the ball at its highest point, he lets it drop. And that allows Johnson in, and look how well Green gets down. Manda made it back, Yobo forward. Pinti seems to be fighting the losing battle, he did really well to keep that in play and it's come out to Osman! That's persistence for you, Osman the goal scorer quite rightly will take the credit but how well did Beatty do, he refused to give up on that ball. Could have flashed at the ball but Beatty does ever so well to keep it alive. But it's good backup play from Osman, keeps his concentration and just steers it past Robert Green in the goal. Leon Osman celebrates his 100th appearance for Everton. Tevez continues to look West Ham's best bet. But now they've got it back with Johnson. The quiet looks as confident as you expect, Andy Johnson. Good pressure though from Everton in the midfield. Win the ball back off Bowyer and tentative of taking the shot on and that's the uh, Icelandic owner of West Ham United who's finding out the hard way that uh, life in the English Premier League can be very very difficult it's Rio Coca for West Ham still a couple of minutes remaining here but Carsley has it back for Everton and plays it in neatly to young Vaughan what a moment for him the man who thought his career was finished by injury has just clinched the points for Everton. Yeah, and it's good work from McFadden, somebody putting in that extra yard. Beatty did it for the first goal, McFadden does it for the second, and well, he just shifts the ball from right to left, blasts it through Robert Green to secure all three points. We started the season quite well. Um, you know, we hit a, hit a blip of a couple of games, um, you know, and we've we hope we're over that now and we're, we're trying to progress and get back on the, the winning trail and keep moving up the, up the league and at the minute we're, we're able to do that. With a lengthy list of key players on the treatment table, it meant the long trip to Fratton Park was always going to be a tough one. Taylor! Oh, what a stunning goal from Matty Taylor! What a strike that is. I mean, it's down up through the middle of the ball, it's definitely stranded Tim Howard. An advantage by referee Mark Clattenburg. It's Davis, the port out to the right hand side, and O'Neill. Oh, what a hit! It's Carno with an absolute cracker. Great delivery from the right-hand side. Shakes up like he's going to try and whip it around Valente. It comes on the inside of him. Cardin, who's got himself spare at the back, just composes himself, and that's a great side foot volley finish. What must he be thinking after this first half? Carsley. Lee Carsley! Great save by David James. Not sure if that was just going to creep in, but he wasn't taking any chances. I think it may have just been going in the side netting, but David James can't be 100% sure of that, and has to make the save. It's an excellent save. The visit of Chelsea these days is always an event, but Everton gave them a real match at Goodison. Good flick of each of it. Johnson trying to get in behind. Now, what's the referee going to do here? No real appeals from uh, Andrew Johnson. Well, I tell you what, you judge for yourself here. He's got the better of Boularoos. He's definitely, look, there's a shove in the back. No question he's pushed a little bit there, but no appeal at all. And I think that's because that in recent weeks he's received a bit of criticism for maybe hitting the floor a little bit too easily. 
He's saying, you go and have a look at it. That's what he's saying. There's a monitor in every tunnel. Davies to Johnson. And Johnson, he may be smaller, but he's still got a bit of power in that body. And in each of it on the turn, he was held surely by Boularouz. Now the penalty's given. It's a silly challenge. It's a ridiculous challenge to make in that situation. Mikhail Arteta against Hilario. Chance to maybe stop the champions in their tracks. Arteta it is. And it's 1-0 to Everton. After the initial 10-minute spell, when perhaps I thought the visitors looked pretty good, since then Everton have been dominant. That's a great penalty. I think that's the look of a manager that knows his team are on top and deserve to be in front. That man's got all the thinking to do now, Mourinho. Makalele. Came off the hand, no yeah. advantage. Yeah, good refereeing, he's just had a little look once he realises that the no real advantage there, he blows the whistle. I think Mark Housie has been terrific today so far. Chelsea have scored in every Barclays English Premier League match this season. Oh, what a great goal that is! Michael Ballack! <laughs> Just what the champions needed. Tim Howe can't really see it, it's well outside the post when he starts it off, but it comes flying back in. The goalkeeper does brilliant to get something on it, hits the post, hits him on the back and goes in the back of the net. Robin, dropper in the middle. Look at Lampard make a great run as well. You know, Iron Robin, did he need to actually dip back and go to the byline? Problems in the home team camp now. It's another lovely delivery oh. and a mix up. Kalu off the frame. What a miss that is. Look at this one, it drops to Kalu, he spins. It's just an instinctive strike. Six inches the other way and visitors are in front. And Johnson neatly down for Carsley, space out wide for an each of it. Everton have weathered a little bit of a storm and there's Boularouz again, you know, and as uh, soon as the uh, Everton player gets past him, it's another very awkward looking challenge. Yeah, clumsy again. Needs a good quality of delivery on the cross here from Arteta. Stubbs makes the decoy run. And Hilario with a good strong fist. Corner. Yep, decent fist from Hilario that time. Positive punch, got plenty of height on it. Height buys you a few vital seconds as a defender. <laughs> Love the way he's got his arms crossed, as if to say, look, I'm innocent. It's a great ball in, and Everton are in front, and it's Yobo! There's three white shirts under the ball in front of Joseph Yobo. Nobody attacks it. Balak is stepping out, he's desperately trying to wrestle with Anitabi. And in the end, Joseph Yobo fires it past Ilario. Everton haven't been in the half, now they're back in front. It's been a great game of football to watch, the cut and thrust. Now Lampard, That's a screamer! Frank Lampard! What a hit. Fabulous, fabulous goal from Frank Lampard. And you've just got to watch that one. That is a stunning goal, Tim Howard, no chance with that. And how important is that strike going to be? Drogba's the only player in the box at the moment, Shevchenko. Here's Drogba, Drogba on the turn, and he's hit the post! None better, back to goal, than Didier Drogba. Brilliant. Stunning effort, got no right to even consider having a shot from there. Shevchenko, Drogba, it could get even better! Oh, sensational! That really is a champion's response. And haven't they just thrown down the gauntlet to Manchester United? What a stunning, stunning goal. This time it's Shevchenko, the assist. What a hit that is from Didier Drogba. We've seen him do that three or four times this season. He's produced some brilliant goals, but what a hit that is. Fabulous, fabulous goal. Yeah.
you think that you've got the game in your hands and suddenly you drop the three points like that and it's unbelievable, you can't believe it, that's, they've been two magnificent goals from them and I think that's why they are the champions. Reading's first season in the Premiership was becoming an unbridled success, but the travelling Evertonians were treated to a right royal show at the Majeski. Both strikers in the middle, Andy Johnson, he scored! His goal drought is over! Andy Johnson's fine run against Reading continues. Seven goals in six games against the Royals. Watch this, Arteta picks him out, hit it now. He doesn't, hit Sonko and goes past Hanneman. And certainly David Moyes won't be complaining, nor will Andy Johnson, but Marcus Hanneman will be ruining that little deflection right in front of him. Naismith to Carsley, one for McFadden. Good control. Johnson, Osman. Oh, off the underside of the bar, did it cross the line? Everton is screaming for a second goal. What a strike by Osman. Well, this is another world-class strike. Absolutely phenomenal. On the half volley, beats Hanneman, comes down. Oh, right on the line. Some of their forward play has been outstanding in this first half, Everton. Johnson. Gets the better of Inga Marsen, who's a bit hesitant. McFadden is free in the middle. Still Johnson. McFadden, good turn, good finish, great goal. Everton lead by two goals to nil. And James McFadden scores his first Premier League goal of the season. Inga Marsen just hesitates. Look at Johnson's pace. And you're thinking, get it into the middle for McFadden. He checks back. He puts it, he's got so much to do. Murty lets him turn and doesn't con contest it in there, and it's an easy finish for McFadden on his right foot. But watch this, put it in, he doesn't, he checks back inside Inga Marsen. McFadden holds, look at the touch here. Oh, absolutely brilliant. Pleasing performance, I think uh, for 60 minutes we played really well, as good as we've played for a long time now. Uh, we were expecting Reading to throw everything at us in the last 30 minutes, and they did that, and, and they created a number of chances too, but we managed to... Uh, to uh, weather the storm and, and maybe towards the end we could have nicked it to uh, nicked a third goal as well. So it's pleased to get back to winning ways because we've been uh, stuttering a little bit recently. It's that kind of uh, quality and that kind of speed that we need to play week in, week out now if we're to challenge for Champions League places or UEFA Cup places. Middlesbrough at Goodison was by no means a game to remember, but the visitors' negative approach at Goodison paid compliment to the attacking threat the Gareth Southgate knew Everton possessed. Arteta gets over all these set pieces for Everton. Andy Johnson having his shirt pulled there. Surely Johnson had claims for a penalty. I tell you what, they, they go to sleep here. Arteta takes a quick free kick. You see Taylor Tullin the jersey of Andrew Johnson. Middles are very lucky. Andrew Davis. Nice dummy from Catamol. Yakubu with room in which to turn. Now Downing. Got a run from Taylor. The ball in as well from Taylor. Herez, a decent one. He gets himself into good positions, doesn't he, Lee Catamol? Oh, once again, good work between Downing and Taylor. Taylor, good support play for his left winger there. Whips on a terrific cross. Pogatex, good climb against it. And each of you, here's McFadden. And Carsley! Got plenty behind that, the Everton captain. Yeah, I mean, he strikes that really well. I mean, it's sailing over the crossbar. We don't have to make a real good contact. <laughs> Driven forward by Simon Davis. Johnson, great reception of the ball there. Ahead of Pogatetz. This is van der Meyde. Davis in the way. And so many red shirts have been today. And there's a deflection. Which could easily have sped into that Middlesbrough goal off an Ichibi. Well, would they give the offside against an Ichibi if he had guided this into Mark Swartz's goal? Terrific touch by Andy Johnson. It's the short well blocked by Davis here. Tries a long range one. Is he offside? I do believe he is. Just. Next to Goodison, Newcastle, who bore the brunt of their North East neighbour's stubbornness and paid the penalty in more ways than one. Starting P.T. Davis, we're at the right for Everton. 
Keith Johnson. Let me touch through. Ali Chobe got one in the middle waiting if he can find him. Perhaps he should have gone for goal. It's not Lameda. And he made the darting run inside the area. And he did try and find him, but... Youngster may well have had more success with a strike on goal, but in comes the corner. Half third, might get another opportunity! And this time, Victor Adichebe has made sure. <laughs> Miller again, looking for Martins. Oh, Tim Howard had to scramble. as well. Parker through to Solano. Get up for Butts. Shots for a penalty. There could be a card coming out as well. Emre telling Gallagher. And he surely doesn't like that. Robo's in there as well. This is all a bit silly. Involved, Miller involved, it's a virtual melee. Here's the incident. Osman tackles Dyer inside the area. And the Femi Martins with the chance to get Newcastle back in the game. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Would you believe it? to be one of the worst penalties I think I've ever seen. What on earth was he doing? Arteta then, both arms in the air. Michael! Did he cross the line? It did this time. And Ali Chemi has got a second. As it was with the first goal, a poacher's goal. And it's turning out to be a real afternoon to remember for Victor Anichebe. The ball off the line, but then turned in at the second attempt. Johnson with the initial header. Then it fell onto Anichebe's head, off the line, off the bar. And the young striker has got his second. That is one for the scrapbook, a real collector's item. Philip Neville. Well, his goals are as rare as hen's teeth, but look at this. I'm not sure whether he struck it as sweetly as he would have hoped. But Shea Given was beaten. And the result is the same. Everton. 3-0 in front. Captain Fantastic got his first goal in a blue shirt and really enjoyed the moment. It was some sort of a shot. Uh, <laughs> very poor effort, but uh, got a little bit of luck. And uh, when you've not scored a goal for 18 months, uh, you take anything really, to be honest with you. And uh, you can tell the way I celebrated, I was there. Uh, it was a bit over the top, wasn't it, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> but who cares, eh? I'm yeah. <laughs> I said to... Uh, the lads afterwards were saying, well, you know, was it a European Cup final when I scored that goal? I said, well, it felt like it when I knocked that goal in, but uh, it's great. You know, I, I, uh, I don't score many goals, so when I do, I, I, I hope to enjoy them. That win over Newcastle was vital. It pushed the Blues up to seven and kept Evertonians' dreams about more European nights at Goodison Park alive. The month of January breeds anticipation amongst fans as the transfer window opens. And David Moyes didn't disappoint with his loan capture of the talented and very highly rated Portuguese midfield player Manuel Fernandes from Benfica. January also brought the curtain down on the wonderful Everton career of David Weir, who took the opportunity to join his former manager Walter Smith at the club he supported as a boy, Glasgow Rangers. Weir had been a magnificent servant to Everton 
and left with the best wishes of everyone. Simon Davis also left the club during the window, returning to London to join Fulham. We were sorry to see uh, Dave go because he was a great captain for me. I had a good relationship with him. And I always said to him if he felt as if it was getting difficult, you know, or he felt as if that, you know, he didn't see any, any chance against the team to come and speak to me. You know, the performances of, of uh, Joseph Yobo, uh, Julian Lescott, and Alan Stubbs been around the team as well. I mean, it was becoming a bit more limited for Dave. We didn't want him to go, I'd liked him to stay because he was such a good professional. But uh, I did understand his views about wanting to play and it only has gone to show how good a player is by what he's done with Glasgow Rangers at this present time. However, Everton's New Year celebrations were short-lived as Manchester City somehow took all three points at Eastlands and Blackburn Rovers ended this year's FA Cup run at the first hurdle. If any inspiration was needed for the visit of Reading, it arrived in the form of a genuine living legend, Sylvester Stallone. His dramatic appearance raised the spirits around the ground, but unfortunately, even with the returning Tim Cahill, Everton couldn't quite deliver the knockout blow. Crashing off Neville, going to earth and getting a free kick, which is uh, going to infuriate Phil Neville. I do well, Kevin Doyle. See that his teammate has sort of lost the ball, hustled off with it by Johnny Lescott. Oh, interesting goings on inside the six yard box. It's crazy because the goalkeeper can't see the ball. And... It's Shorey. Is it in? It is! From Hunt! Inside that crazily congested six-yard box, Stephen Hunt rose, and the poor goalkeeper, Tim Howard, really had almost no room for manoeuvre. Well, what's he doing, Tim Howard? He should be screaming to his defenders to get themselves off the line. They're all getting in each other's way. It's a Lescott own goal. Yeah, it comes back off Jolien Lescott. Good movement from Andy Hunt. There we go, Lescott can do absolutely nothing about it. Van der Maeder. Everton's home form this season has been on the whole pretty good. They've only lost two Premier League games on this ground. And behind again here, though, and uh, Van der Maeder has aimed one in. And the goalkeeper came and got very lucky that uh, Sonko and Inge Marsen were both behind him to clear off the line. Fantastic cross from Van der Maeder. There's a goalkeeper coming with a Superman punch, gets nowhere near it. Goodison trying to encourage despite its impatience. Johnson goal side, Andy Johnson has pulled it wide. Andy Johnson does everything right, clips it over, just gets too much bend on the ball. Hanneman does well because he stands his ground. Neville potentially to re-deliver. Goes wide instead. Aimed in towards Anachibi and Johnson, and the goalkeeper came, and Johnson has equalised for Everton. And uh, David Moyes is an animated figure, he wants to go on and win the game. But there's been a Howard Howler, there's now been a Hanneman Howler, and uh, Andy Johnson is just the man you want on your side to capitalise on moments such as this. It's my honour coming to a legendary club like this one and just being part of the action is fantastic. I've never been to Liverpool before, but it's quite a reception. I'm here to really appreciate Premiership uh, soccer on, a, in its, you know, on its highest level. I've never been to one before. You've just been to the dressing room to meet the manager or the coaches, yeah. as they're called across the water, and all the players, and it was terrific, wasn't it? They were so pleased to see you. Yeah, you know, it's, it's great because you know we we tend to, uh, you know, a lot of athletes they're, they're impressed with people in another uh, mm -hmm. uh, occupation like me as an actor. I go, I don't want to meet any more actors, but to meet real athletes is, is very exciting was one of the most humble men I have ever met. He came, he did whatever we asked him. I remember walking him down to the side of the pitch and, and, and he said, well, what do I do? I said, you just walk out there. And he said, well, what if they don't know me? And I said, Sly, just walk <laughs> out there and you will see. And I gave him the scarf and I said, you know, just hold the scarf up. So as we know, he walks out into the middle, he holds the scarf up and you could see his face, and when he thought, my God, there's 40,000 here chanting my name. And when he did that rocky dance and that rocky jumping up and down, I thought, oh, this is wonderful. Sadly, we couldn't get him a victory. Mm. Or he couldn't bring us a victory. <clears throat> 
but at least we got the equaliser and you know what he is an Evertonian don't let anyone tell you otherwise he still rings he's doing um, what is it Rambo in Thailand and he rings every weekend how do we do how are we getting on he is so into this football club now and he'll be back next season he will be back next season believe me he'll be back a big performance was needed at Wigan Athletic to salvage the January points tally and no one in blue left the saturated JJP Stadium disappointed. And each of it. Good strength. What about the challenge? It's a penalty. Good play from Anichibi. Decent ball from Arteta. He's going for... He's going, well... It's Onsworth's challenge on Anichibi. Well, a former Evertonian has given Everton the chance from the spot, and it's Arteta, and it's 1-0. His fifth league goal of the season. Wasn't too far away, Chris Kirkland. There's more than enough power behind the ball. To Paul Jewell, his uh, plate not getting any easier here. Shooting chance, maybe, and they've hit the frame as close as they've come. Heskey follows up. Just within fractions of his first ever Wigan goal. Davies. Arteta. Beattie. Forward comes Phil Neville. Arteta! And that's game over. Two for Arteta. The first from the spot. The second in stoppage time. Best cross of the match. First time. Doesn't have to pick his spot, really. Just goes for an area. And hopefully one of his teammates is going to attack the ball. Arteta does what Tim Cahill does so well so often. Everton have sealed their first ever win against Wigan Athletic. It had been another masterful display from the Spanish maestro. We got the three points, which is the most important thing, and, and got two goals as well, and helped the team to win and go back to the victories as well that we needed and, and be up there on the table where we want to be. It was a big season for Mikel, and he played very well once again. You know, off the back of the season before, he had been player of the year, and he came into this season, and you know, we were looking to see how he would adapt. And he's played on the right, he's played on the left for us. He can, he can handle the ball, and he's given us that little bit of flair that we've required. But yet, we have to praise Mikel in the way that he's changed into also his work rate and his style uh, is now beginning to suit the British game as well. Only one win in January saw Everton slip out of the European places, but the teams above them were still within touching distance. They say there's nothing more dangerous than a wounded animal. So Everton had to be very wary going into the game at Anfield, with Liverpool after revenge after their earlier humiliation at Goodison. This is Bellamy. He's got the return from Count Bellamy! Turns away in disappointment. Deserved better, well beaten Hibbert there on the 1-2. But does it quite clearly? He's offside, and you see the flag raised. Good officialing. Osman to Cahill. And then left a little short. And here's Johnson with a chance for Everton. Nice turn. Second chance for the Sharks. Saved by the trailing leg of Rayner. Won't have a better chance. Alert to take the opportunity when the ball was coming through the middle there. And here was the clever play by Johnson, and there at that moment, you think he can slide it in. He goes for the shot rather than the placement. A draw at Anfield is a good result. It's always been a hard place for any team to get a result. And uh, for us to go there and get a, get a point was, was fine. So Liverpool's revenge mission was foiled, but now Everton had their own plans for retribution against the Blackburn side that had demolished their FA Cup hopes.
It's Carsley's head out by drop for Andy Johnson. Oh, what a finish from Andy Johnson. 26 years old today. And what a strike for the birthday boy. Is he offside? No, just as the ball's played. Ball falls to Johnson. Wasn't offside, did brilliantly to get to an onside position. Gallagher's corner, whistles off the head of Lescott. There's a chance to play now for Everton. Johnson's got one that made it to his right. Fernandez to his left. Finds Manuel Fernandez on his debut. Good block by Friedel. Fernandez again! With an inches of capping his debut with a goal for Everton. Johnson looks up, could have played it right. Sees Fernandes making a run on the left. Pedro flies out his goal. Bentley away from Fernandes, everything to his right. This is Brett Everton. Bentley again. Yoba away. And Cahill was just caught sleeping there. And Kuznets filling. Oh, that was a great effort. And Tim Howard turning the ball over the crossbar. Well, first Blackburn effort, and it's a very good one as well. Cahill goes to sleep here with this ball. I mean, just deal with it. He's saying, oh, wait a minute, I never got a call. So deal with the ball in the first place. Tim Howard called into action. There's Gallagher with a shot at goal, and Tim Howard just about got fingertips on that. I tell you, this is a difficult one to save as well. I mean, he strikes this really well, Paul Gallagher. But the ball skips up just before it reaches Tim Howard here, just looks up. My, didn't half hit that well. Arteta, good play from Mikel Arteta, Cahill, Johnson and Van der Meijer in the middle towards Andy Johnson. Well, he didn't connect with it truly, did he? Well, how does he miss it? Plays it to his back foot a bit, just a fraction behind him, can't adjust his feet properly. Look at the reaction of David Moyes, he knows his strikers to put this Everton side two goals up. It's a great day for me, it's a great day for the team because it was an important game. Uh, we're going to a 14 day break now, so it's important that we got a win and uh, got luck away from uh, Blackburn because I think there were two points behind us now, so it gives us a little bit of a gap and a little bit of a breathing space. But uh, it's time now to have a little rest up and obviously work hard towards the uh, Tottenham game. The Euro charge for Mikel Arteta added another goal to his collection. Everton needed to get back on track at Watford, who were scrapping for their Premiership lives. But the Blues put on a very stylish display. In the goals at the moment. Nice ball, good save. Fernandez and Johnson together. I think it was Fernandez. My instinct was who got the final touch. Once it comes inside, you see him shape up the shot, Lee gets there. I've got a feeling, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think this angle will probably give us the best view. Fernandez. Fernandez it is. Cheeky Andy Johnson peeling away with his hand up. As all good strikers should. And his first goal for Everton, Manuel Fernandez. And it could be. A really damaging one for Watford, and they could be even worse trouble here. Johnson, surely penalty. And indeed it is. And is there going to be a card as well? He peels off now, gets in there. There's a tussle, there's a tussle. There is contact. Andy Johnson against Richard Lee to make it 2-0 to Everton. Johnson scores. Straight down the middle. Here's beating it like a goal. Osman. Lovely shot, lovely goal. Leon Osman wraps it up for Everton in stoppage time. 3-0. 
so simple. BD does well, holds the ball up. What you need your big target man to do, sets up Osman. Look at that. Tired defending from Jordan Stewart. Great sharp finish from Osman. Seven points in February, back up to seventh in the league and back in the final UEFA Cup spot. Everton were well poised for the season running. After overcoming one side down at the bottom, Everton then travelled to Sheffield United, but found the Blades in stubborn mood. They stay in, Cahill's header. Oh, and off the line brilliantly by Davis. Well, it looked as though Naismith had carried that ball over the line, just a fraction. It's a great run forward. Does he keep that in? Touch and go. Great goal line clearance by Claude Davis. Defending his box really well. Here's Kazim Richards. Near post, it's in! Great finish of Rob Hulse. The first chance he's had in the match. Sheffield United's top scorer gives the Blades the lead with a really cute finish. Good finish with the top goal scorer, good ball in, good near post run. You'd look for your defender, certainly David Moyes will be for his defender, will be doing a little bit better than that. Naismith. Here comes Paddy Kenny. Oh, what a fumble. Johnson, keepers nowhere, and he's gone down, it's a penalty. And for the second week running, Andy Johnson wins a penalty. Oh, what's Paddy Kenny thinking about here? My goodness gracious, that's an almighty blunder with the goalkeeper here. Arteta against Kenny. Oh, and off the crossbar. Precision, pinpoint finishing from the Spaniard. Well, he didn't have smashed this penalty. Paddy Kenny thinks he's got away with it. That's the underside of the crossbar and the line and back out. I think the draw is pretty much a fair result. Andrew Johnson's excellent form was receiving plenty of interest and Arsene Wenger was a rumoured fan. AJ showed just why with a late, late show at Goodison against Arsenal. Johnson finds a way through here and could finish. Brought down by Lehman, surely. A controversial moment in the opening minutes here. Johnson away, got the other side there. I think goalkeeper did excellently, actually, to get back and to manage to get the hand to the ball. Well, there's no question that reputations go before you in this game. We'll come back to that as uh, Baptista fires a very good ball through and Howard also makes a risky but successful challenge. Jungberg's cross, eventful start here at Goodison. Howard also just got the ball. And that's the key factor, and the referee read it correctly on both occasions. 11th last season, Everton, most of their wins in the Premier League were by the same 1-0 margin. That's only happened a couple of times this season. And right on cue, he hits an absolute belter. That deserved to be a goal. Well, we know about his strength from free kicks, and... Uh... 30 yarders. Well, it's almost two years since Lee Carsley scored for Everton. It's a lovely ball. Wazitski. Oh, Ali Adier has missed a great chance. Wonderful combination play. Great little run by Rosicki. And Ali Adair, no patience. It's a good ball in. Vaughan gets up, so does Osman, and Johnson's there too, and still Osman! Oh, for the second time in the game, Everton have struck the post. Unlucky. Carsley rattled the post first half, Osman second half. 
Using his header on, oof. It was an awkward one for Gilberto. It came off his shin for an Everton corner. Well, you can't keep Everton down. They've resisted those flowing Arsenal attacks and they're fighting like crazy to try and get the winner. Careful, Arsenal. <laughs> slippy. It's getting slippy. And then he should be. I told you he makes some kind of nuisance of himself. He already has. Oh, it's a good little flick on. And it's Jensen who has surely won the points for Everton. Their leading scorer has timed it perfectly into stoppage time. And he, with a predator's instinct, has surely put Arsene Wenger and Arsenal to the sword. An erring shot. Low, left foot, clean as a whistle, Lehman no chance. Further proof of the strides Everton have made under David Moyes. The team took four points off both Liverpool and Arsenal this season. Just how big a scalp is Arsenal? It's massive, I mean they're a fantastic club. Um, I'm sure next season they'll be right up the, um, you know, pushing for the championship. And in terms of your push for Europe as well, is this an important victory? Definitely, yeah. Three points is great for us today. You know, uh, the boys have worked hard. We've had a bit of a break. We're going into another break now. But like I say, like the boys have worked hard, and we've got ourselves in like a great position with like eight like games to go. When you're playing Arsenal again, it's it's nil nil, and well, you've got to say it's not the worst result. No, but when you when you get all three points in the last second, then you know that the the opposition have got no time to to kick off. Uh, it's, it's a great feeling and uh, it happens, it's part of management. Sometimes you can be completely in control, other times you don't. And, and I'm a supporter as well. I'm, I'm there managing the team, but I'm also supporting the team. And uh, if we score, I want to enjoy it as much as any other supporter. Andrew Johnson's late winner was probably one of the most defining moments of the season and bred a confidence throughout the fans. The European football would be coming back to Goodison. Points were shared at Villa Park, but not for the first time this season. David Moyes was left scratching his head over a refereeing decision. Oh, and it's a bit of a mess, and it's in from Jolian Lescott. His first goal for Everton. Well, inside quarter of an hour, Everton take the lead, and it's Lescott on his return to the city of his birth who cobbles it up. Well, it may have got a hint of a touch off the head of Wilfred Baumer, but it's Jolian Lescott's goal, no doubt about that, and Everton in front here. Real mess, the delivery was hard to deal with. Osman. Vaughan. Right now, but still came away with it. Vaughan! Oh. Oh, it's a strike of a player who's in really confident mood and he came out of a difficult situation there and thought, well, I'm going to have a pop, but that was so close. Seven and a half minutes left. It might drop for Carew, and it's got to be. Agbon Lahore gets the equaliser. Well, it's been a much improved, much improved second half performance from the home team, and they have threatened this many a time. Peru trying to get the shot away, Howard, all he could do was get his body in the way. And Agbon Lahore gobbling up the scraps there to give Aston Villa an equaliser, which could prove priceless. Fulham were in free fall when they arrived at Goodison and they found the Blues in irresistible form. And it's a former Evertonian, Simon Davis, who will take it. Dangerous ball, and it's turned out. 
Fulham's first real chance of the game. And Carlos Bocanegra has converted it. The cross whipped in by Simon Davis and Bocanegra rose highest. Found space in between the Everton defenders and was able to head beyond Tim Howard. That's useful from Neville to Lescott and back to Neville. Everton zipping it about, Arteta, Lescott up from the back, chance to cross, lots in there, Johnson was one of them! And it's Lee Carsley who's got there. The wounded soldier gets Everton back on level terms. The first time Everton have really zipped the ball about and it's paid dividends. Lovely ball from Lescott. Johnson was waiting, Vaughan was waiting, but Carsley got in front and got there first. And that's the finish of a top centre forward. Arteta to swing it in again. Vaughan's there, header comes in, and Everton have completely turned this game on its head. And it's another unlikely scorer, Alan Stubbs. And it was the dead ball specialist, Arteta, whose delivery was pinpoint. And the header wasn't bad either, was it? Long ball which is flipped on by Vaughan. Johnson will do well to keep this in here. Just manages it too. Arteta. Vaughan! He's got his goal now. And it is richly deserved. He's been knocking on the door. He's won countless flick-ons as Vaughan. Johnson did brilliantly to keep it in. Lovely ball in by Arteta. And that is the finish of an accomplished striker. Now it's Anachibi. Oh, that's a lovely pass wide left to Arteta. He's in acres of space here. Osmond's in the penalty area. Pull back for Anachibi. He's only beyond the field two minutes. And he's just sealed the victory for Everton. A great finish from Victor Anachibi. And James Vaughan getting on the score sheet. And now with 10 minutes to go, this man, Victor Anachibi, only on a matter of minutes as a substitute. He didn't look rusty at all, did he? <laughs> Everton's two young guns in impressive form. It's an unbelievable thing. You dream about this when you're a kid playing in the Premiership, scoring goals, and it's just like a dream. So. When Vaughan signed uh, for us, uh, the club sent him and his family on a holiday together, and he asked, could Victor go too? And you thought, oh, that's good. They could be a great partnership together, those two boys. They're really, really close friends. And... Uh, I think that shows itself on the pitch when they, they, you know, on the other occasion when they've been together. But it is, it is terrific. And you know, you'll see, you'll hear my voice go down with a bit. Why? Because you don't want to get too excited. You don't want to get overexcited. You don't want to think, could this be as special as it looks at times? It's been a great boost for us to bring those two young boys through, Victor Amachibi. Uh, really finished like the season before, he finished right at the end well, kicked on in pre-season, looked like the one who was scoring the goals in the pre-season and uh, his early part of the season he done very well, Victor. Uh, James Vaughan for example was only recovering, struggling to, to jog with his knee, he had a really bad knee injury and it was becoming frustrating for him the longer it went on and we, we did for, for a long time discuss it, we put him out on loan to try and get it back. But uh, in the end, we stuck with him and he ended up finishing the last two or three months of the season in, in great form. So both those players have been a big boost to us. The race for the European places has hit top gear by now. 
and Everton's trip to the Reebok was vital with both sides very much in form. Move up to play the offside, nothing given, and it's a disaster for the Blues as Kevin Davis nets for Bolton Wanderers. It's his 50th Premiership goal. Everton play an offside trap that didn't work. Jolly and Lescott was the man, it seems, who was left furthest back. Kevin Davis takes full advantage. Disaster for the Blues. Lescott didn't go. Davis left in space, beats Howard from close range. It's a nightmare for Everton as Kevin Davis gives Bolton the lead. 18 minutes gone at the Reebok. It's Bolton Wanderers 1, Everton 0. Two in the header. Here's Osman trying to skip away from Campo. Osman, nice ball into Vaughan's feet, still going. Real chance, James Vaughan! It's 1-1! James Vaughan, the hero once again for Everton. And it's Vaughan's third of the season who brings the Blues level. He was on target on Friday night against Fulham. He is again tonight against Bolton Wanderers. James Vaughan makes no mistake from close range. Good work, Osman. He was the one who persisted. Battling away against Gardner there. Campo got the challenge and couldn't get anything from it. It broke for Vaughan, left-footed, no problem. And James Vaughan levels matters at the Reebok. Everton have come from behind again. It's James Vaughan once again, and it's all square. Nothing Yussi Eskalainen could do about that. Hibbert, well forward, and challenging Mate. Carsley goes up, Vaughan tries to swing a shot away, it's going to come to Osman. Osman battling edge of the box, still going Leon Osman, and still a judge to have fouled there Leon Osman as he battled away with Ivan Campo. James Wall now needing some attention. Vaughan looks like bleeding on his ankle there. I think it was purely accidental, and he's gone down holding that left ankle. I think as he swung a foot, he hit Abdallah Mate's studs. You can see how desperate he is. And this isn't a serious injury. He has played so well once again for Everton this afternoon. Such a key man for the side. Going into the business end of the season, David Moyes and the squad's blueprint was to now secure European football for Evertonians next season. Few victories this season were harder fought and more nail-biting than when Charlton were the visitors to Goodison Park. It took a moment of real brilliance to settle it. Here's Osman, trying to get the better of Thatcher, deflected by Elkar Corey, and they're so lucky then, Charlton, as it came off the foot of the post. What a moment for Charlton here. Looks as if he's going to sneak inside that post, just hits the outside of it. Hibbert did well to win it back initially, but Zheng Zhi has found Darren Bent! Agonisingly wide! Golden opportunity for Dan Bent. That really should have ended in the back of the net. So what can Mikel Arteta produce here? Johnson! Oh, that looked as if it was going to sneak in at Scott Carson's back post here. Arteta's corner, Yobo coming in, McFadden! Zhengji heads back towards his own goal, Thatcher away. It's Arteta who keeps it in. Young away this time, McFadden again! Great save! Followed in by Julian Lescott! Well, 
Now, when it falls to the feet of Andy Jones, you think it's going to end up in the back of the net, but a brilliant bit of keeping for Carson. Falls straight into the path of Julian Lescott on his favoured left foot. It's only one place this ball's going to end, back of the net. Well, he enjoyed that. He must have wondered if it would ever happen today. Bruguera. That's the bank trying to hold off Julian Lescott. Ambrose up ahead. So too is Matt Holland. He's helped it on to Darren Bent. He's done it. Darren Bent equalises. And what an absolutely priceless goal that could be for Charlton Athletic. And balls up in there. Falls it in the feet of Bent. But he finishes this one brilliantly. Just moves it to the side. And a great finish. Alan Pardew's team have pulled it out when it mattered most. Now Neville. McFadden. James McFadden takes the extra touch, and what a quality goal! That is absolutely glorious! Down the defender. What about that for a touch, and what about that... Julian, two goals in a month, what's going on? I don't know, I've um, been getting a bit of stick early in the season for uh, missing a few chances, but thankfully now they're going in. Is it a relief to get the first one at Goodison Park? Definitely, but more, more important was to get the result, and um, the boys worked hard, we based our performances on hard work, and we knew it was going to be tough today, but um, with our extra bit of quality, we thought we'd, um, we would believe that we'd get the win. Yeah, it was a good goal, but the most important thing is, as you said, it's a winning goal, and uh, <coughs> it keeps us on the march to uh, keep up our position in the league. And, Obviously, it moved us up a position, and hopefully, we can maintain the level of performance and obviously the run of results that we've been getting for the runner. Yeah, well, that may have been the game we got us inevitably in the in the UEFA Cup because we had we'd gone one 0 up, I think, in about the eighty second minute, and I hoped that that would have been enough to to see us through. But Charlton came back and got a goal. They were they were fighting for survival at the time, had a really good record at that present time, and uh, then for for Faddy to come on and score a a spectacular goal was terrific because that was that was the difference on the day of us, as I said before, maybe making Europe. Up. Last what eight minutes in the Charlton game, when we win, we lose the victory, and we regain the victory with probably my favourite strike of the season. That was just an extraordinary strike. I mean, everything we've ever wanted from Faddy comes in that moment. Defeat to survival chasing West Ham at Upton Park was Everton's first setback on the road since New Year's Day, but it still left the places for the UEFA Cup spaces wide open. On Tuesday the 24th of April, news filtered through that shook every Evertonian to the core. Alan Ball had died of a heart attack at the age of just 61. He was a terrific, terrific man. Uh, he spoke about football. You know, he knew what was happening, and I, I, I used to have great conversations because I wanted to know how, you know, you know, Colin Harvey, Howard Kendall, Alan Ball played together, how they worked. You know, how did Joe Royal play up front, and, and who played around, who got forward, and who defended. And he was always telling me about the team and how they played. And uh, you know, he was a good man, and I enjoyed him. He wasn't a bitter old player in any way, and uh, he was one who only wanted to see the team and Everton doing well. He'll be so missed, and, and, and the tragedy that he was a year to the day from Lappy. So it, it's a funny old time, isn't it? Um, you know, we've lost so many of our fans this season, and uh, back to back, those two legends. Um, but, you know, they left the world as Evertonians, and there's. there's that's a great tribute to our club. A true legend of the game, a true gentleman and a true blue. Normally when Manchester United come to Goodison, the Wayne Rooney factor takes centre stage. But on this occasion, everything paled into insignificance as both Everton and United fans paid their tribute and showed their respects to Alan Ball. Alan 
Stubbs to give this a whack and he's gone in. It might have taken it from But Alan Stubbs has put Everton ahead here and shaken up the title race again. Goodness me. Oh, that's a long way out. Must take a big deflection. Oh, deflection off somebody, James. Carrick, Carrick Off Michael Carrick. Yeah, it just goes over Van der Sar. Fernandez. Transfer shot and a goal! What a goal that is! Pika punishes Manchester United. They can't believe that on the United bench. It was a thunderous strike. Pick this one out. What a fantastic strike. Wes Brown just shaves off him a little bit. There's so much power behind it. Straight over Van der Sar. Here's the gig's corner, and Turner's dropped in, and Manchester United turned in, and a mistake by the rookie goalkeeper. Oh, he knows he made, he's made a massive error. It's a, oh, he dropped an almighty clanger. John O'Shea, well, it's still got to be scored. That's a big goal because it's put Manchester United back in this. Carrick swings it in, and Cristiano Ronaldo off the line, not off the wall. The old Manchester United player into his own net, and Manchester United have pulled this around. Well, a disaster for Everton. Cristiano Ronaldo with a fantastic leap. I think that's goal bound anyway. And Phil Neville, well, he just swings with his right foot when he should go with his left and smashes it into his own net. Not really away by Carsley. It's fallen to Rooney. He can win it here. He might have won it for Manchester United. Doesn't see much danger when O'Shea crosses the ball. Well, look at that skill from Rooney. Absolute magnificent composure. Round Hibbert and through the legs, I think, of Alan Stubbs, is it? And straight past Ian Turner. Eagles. He's put it into. Goes lead goal for Manchester United. Look at the celebration. Oh, comes inside Alan Stubbs. What a fantastic finish. Round his. Just like AJ's goal against Arsenal, James McFadden's goal at home to Charlton showed the character in the squad to fight right up to the final whistle. And the reason Everton was sitting sixth in the table. Portsmouth arrived at Goodison as one of the Blues' direct opponents for a UEFA Cup place. And although victory wouldn't formally guarantee European football, it would certainly put Everton in the driving seat. Three Everton players on the edge of the penalty area. Arteta gets across and towards Osman, Lee Carsley! Everyone thought that was in. Just let him get the ball in, passes to Osman, grabs his leg round it and just grazes the outside of the post. James Ford takes the ball away from Primus. James Ford for Everton. Is that a penalty? Yes it is. Johnson with the challenge. Everton penalty. Good pace to get away. Here comes a vital touch away. And that's a penalty. Arteta against David James. Mikel Arteta. 1-0 to Everton. And that could be the goal that sends them towards Europe. Well, I think David James will be disappointed with himself. Seem to get a hand on it. Yes, the right way. Well, Harry Redknapp's big complaint about this season for Portsmouth is lack of goals. They need one now. Everton, though, pushing for a second. James Ford is onside here, and he should be sliding in. Couldn't connect. Wonderful commitment from Arteta. Beautiful ball. David James, give him credit for that. Corner to Everton. Stubbs, Yobo, let's go. All forward. Goes towards Joseph Yobo. 2 0. And the continent may be calling for David Moy's side. Ball played in there. Half after challenge. It's a good header. Primus gets in no man's land, and the challenge there was an absolute powder puff challenge from Traore. This is Osman. McFadden beat his onside here. McFadden and Naismith to aim for. Goes towards James McFadden. 
corner. Well, fan applause, Beatty there. He does well. It's his first involvement in the game. Oh, dear. Talk about nerves. Arteta with the corner. That will seal it. 3 0. And it's Gary Naismith on the field for a few seconds. It's a decent enough ball again. It's a good flick at the near post by Beatty. Terrific finish. He gambles for once Primus is caught napping at the far post. With the results elsewhere going the way of the Blues, this impressive result all but secured European football at Goodison once again. Yeah, the game was quality. quality. We knew we needed the win and we got it in the end. And you can see by the fans, the fans are loving it. And we're loving it and we can't wait till next season. This must be quite a moment for you considering all your injury problems. It's a dream come true. When I was in New York, I was thinking, right, it's getting back to first season. And now we're in Europe. It's a dream come true, man. I'm telling you, dream come true. The difference today was the supporters. I mean, the second half, we weren't good in the first half, but supporters made all the difference. Great credit to them. I thought it was like a real football club this afternoon in the second half. I'm really proud of the supporters today. It's fantastic. It's just what we deserve. We, uh, we put a lot of hard work in, and uh, when you put hard work in, you get your just rewards, and we've got it today. We must be very proud to be captain of this club. Yeah, well, we, we, have, we have 100 captains at this club, not just the captain, right through the playing staff to the, to the manager, the coaching staff. Everyone puts it in together. It's, what, it's what's beauty about this club. We knew what we had to do. We had had much must-win situations uh, in teams we were playing who had beaten us. I felt Portsmouth was our must-win game, and uh, it was a terrific game in the end. You know, Portsmouth they were they were needing the points as well to try and make Europe, and it all exploded in the second half. A trip to the deposed Premiership champions was Everton's final game, and Jose Mourinho's side won't have had many teams push them as hard as the Blues did over two league meetings this season. And it's Osman, taking on John Terry, sliding in, Vaughan! Goal to Everton! Everton lead at Stamford Bridge, and is this long unbeaten run here in the Premiership for Chelsea under threat? What a brilliant counter-attack this is. Osman comes inside, he's got the option of Arteta on his outside, plays it into the space for Vaughan, one-on-one -on -one against Czech just slots it down the near side, great finish. Here's Arteta, and now Khalid Boularouz, Arteta has gone down and stayed down. Mark Halsey, though, refuses to stop play. Yeah, he went down because he was fouled, that's why he went down by Ferreira. It's Sean Wright Phillips, Drogba, the level! And who else but Didier Drogba? It could be the goal that assures him of the golden boot in the Premiership, but David Moyes is absolutely furious. He's on the pitch protesting. Quite clearly, Ferreira fouled Arteta. Great pick out it is from Sean White Phillips. And the finish, first time from Drogba, is quite clinical. Tim Howard, outstretched hand, can't get to it. It's right in the corner. This is the foul. Quite clearly there, Ferreira. He takes Arteta. Mark Olsen should have given a free kick to Everton. He allows play to continue, and that's why David Moyes is so upset, and that's why he's being sent to the stand. Neville takes it to Arteta. Cosley! And McFadden goes for the follow-up, the flag's up, it won't count! To be fair, the flag went up really early. The shot from Cosley is ponged away from Czech. Well, that's the wrong decision, isn't it? Because Beattie was offside, but the player who actually put the ball back into the net, he was onside. After a terrific campaign, in which David Moyes side were always in the reckoning to qualify for the UEFA Cup, the final league table makes great reading for Evertonians worldwide. Once again, the club can look forward to a European campaign 